politically, of course, uh, from the dock. And from a professional point of view, Bobby, what do you make of, of uh, Marcelo's? He, he went to Poland on Monday, but before he left, he dropped a note to the prime minister, didn't he? Uh, with a few um, notes on, on recent performance. What do you make of it? Yeah, he's actually in Ukraine, I think, today. He, Is he? He, yeah, he surprised the visit to Ukraine this morning. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, he, but he obviously knows that it's, all, it's probably going to go through. There's not a whole lot he can do to stop it going through. But yeah. he had to sort of mark down the disdain, I think, that he, he actually had for I, what I would call the shortcutting of or scapegoating of the issues that are in hand and uh, basically trying to sort of put a, a small patch over a big problem. And um, he's a good president. I really genuinely feel that the guy has, is a man of the people. And um, he couldn't just uh, sort of roll over and go tick, tick that box, you know. He had to sort of stand up and say that, listen, I think this is a, it's a sham. And, um, and this is why it's a sham. And um, they, have a, they have a lot to answer for. And, I, and, and there's, it, it doesn't, uh, how do you say, correct the, the issues that are in hand. Um, but hopefully it sort of it, it alerts people that this is not the end all and be all of how we're going to fix the issues that that Portugal are existing, especially with the housing crisis as it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well said. Um, and you're you're nodding in agreement here. I think sometimes people expect, don't they, from from the world of in, of global investment and the world of um, Marxism, there will there might not be some common ground. But you 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 famously agreed on this before. Um, it's um, and I think something you said, Bobby, was there is this idea that uh, if people, um, you know, work hard and, and keep working and work like dogs, they might be entitled to some sort of public housing. You see it, interestingly, as, a, as an entitlement of, for, for all work, hardworking people to have a, have a house, have a roof over their heads. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 if people that struggle every day of the week to, to try and um, to pay rent, and they're paying rents that are, are just gone colossal now. And again, it's the government's fault that the, the rents are where they are because there is no housing. There is no uh, stock. There hasn't been any plans for many, many years with regards to trying to correct a, a growing issue. It's just always been sort of a little bit dealt with or so on. Like, you know, we, we've, we've added on an extra couple of thousand houses for social housing and uh, Santa Casa and whatever uh, might sort of help a bit, and but there, there just is no real um, program to fix this issue, and um, it, it is within their grasp to do it. it. Just I don't think they know how to. First of all, and yeah. I know this is going to upset Doc, but it, it's it's the socialist issue. It's the issue that uh, um, there's no money. There is no money um, for for the housing side of it uh, to allow for tax credits and tax incentives that will help people to buy houses and to help uh, developers construct houses that are able to sort of supply the market and, and oversupply the market. And the other issue is the slowness of the municipalities in releasing um, any kind of, of planning um, that will allow people to build in time to create housing for people to live in. And, it's it's a very simple equation. It's the supply and demand. There's nothing there. There's a massive demand, and what they're trying to do is sort of force things. They're trying to they're trying to put a square peg into a round hole. It's as simple mm. as that, and it's just not going to fit. And is is there a political timing issue here? Are the, are the, you know, because a lot of promises and crazy legislation tends to get introduced towards the end of tenure of politicians. Is that what's going on here, Doc? Well. <clears throat> So uh, it's interesting. Uh, I just want to uh, pick up on a couple of things that Bobby said. Uh, I will answer that question. In fact, I'll do that first. Um, I think it's true that um, the president's pushback is going to have no effect on the passage of this um, uh, legislation uh, in the near term. But I do think potentially, um, and, and I'm not a member of a uh, support of the Socialist Party here. I'm a member of a more left wing party, actually, <laughs> who were in government in the last government. But anyway, um, yeah, so I think it'll provide a potential pole of opposition within the Socialist Party if such a thing exists um, to that leadership. And therefore, um, maybe a couple of years down the line, when it's very obvious that this was a bunch of rubbish, um, uh, that. Um, that, that there will be um, 
the ability for an op a, a pole of opposition to, to develop. And this may well be an anchor point for that. So that's the first thing. Um, <clears throat> the second thing I want to say is that this is what happens when you get people trying to play both sides of the argument. And yes, I'm not a capitalist and, uh, and, and I, I, I very much would come down on the side of um, more planned um, provision. Um, one of the um, one of the things that the president said was that yes, okay, there's a commitment to more social housing, but that actually there's no state involvement in the provision of that, and we need state involvement in the provision of that, with which I would agree. Um, there's a relaxation of um, of building standards, so that self-certification by architects effectively, um, the kind of self-certification you will recall that led to the Grenfell Tower disaster um, when we ha had <coughs> unqualified um, self-declaring building inspectors instead of local independent building inspectors, leading to a reduction in the um, quality of that uh, housing. And, uh, you know, you can still see single skinned um, ceramic bricks with holes in them, uh, houses going up around here, single skin and just a, um, a bit of cement over the top. Those houses are going to be effing cold in winter. Um, they're going to be, they're, you know, it's just horrendous. And I know Bobby's not one of these um, bad builders who provides bad quality housing. And, uh, you know, I take my hat off to him for the vision he has. Um, but the, the relaxation of building controls in this way is not the way forward to providing good quality housing. Mm. It's, and it's every, so what, from what you're both saying, it's like everything but the right thing, which is just to appropriate some money towards public housing get them built get people in them and give them the homes they deserve i mean what is so difficult about that they don't well, have the money it's uh, have yeah the money. The, so where is the money going this is i mean we can uh, yeah yeah it probably won't <laughs> like this but if you if you look at where the money's going right look at where the money's going internationally um over the last 50 years the um the proportion of um profit um, or the proportion, sorry, of wealth that goes to um, profit in the uh, form of um, dividends as opposed to the proportion that goes into salaries, the ratio that goes into dividends has increased massively at the expense of salaries. So there is less demand in the market for day-to-day -day products um, there is so that leads to a drop in prices and, and poor quality. There is more money going into the pockets of the already wealthy, and That's this is a this is a structural problem we have over the last 50, 60 years. And that is the yeah, private sector angle, isn't it? To do with the fact that a lot of people actually have to create companies to pay themselves and take dividend mm -hmm. rather than paying taxes, as in pay themselves a short a small salary. So they actually end up cutting the social security aspect of it because it's too high as a percentage of your salary. And basically they create companies, they buy everything within their company, they sell everything within their company, they, they live within that company structure. And of course, how they pay themselves to reduce their taxes is to pay the dividends. And basically, uh, how would you say, it, and sort of have enough money to live on at the end of the day. And I'm talking about ordinary yeah. people. I'm talking about people that have no. big company structures. They're singular Unipasoa companies, if you know what I mean. But yes. um, I, I, I genuinely believe that the biggest issue we have right now is the salary issue and the structure of how taxes are collected and basically why people are not incentivized to actually go and work or why employers are not incentivized to be able to hire people to pay them decent salary. It's because of the social uh, social security aspect and the tax situation. As we're talking earlier on about education, you've got about something like 80 percent of your qualified graduates leave the country mm -hmm. because they can get much better opportunities salaries outside of Portugal. So you're training them to leave. And that's actually uh, I think it's probably the biggest, another big issue you have is the brain drain. You have a lot of the very, very smart people are leaving because they've got an education, they've got a very nice education up there in Coimbra, and they've decided that let's let's go to a place where I actually I go to the bike, don't pay any tax. Yeah, or yeah and, and, and I don't, I, I, I'm not critical of um, 
single person companies because I understand how that works. I've had one myself. But actually, you know, when you look back at the structural issues that I was talking about, um, you know, something like 80 percent of the international GDP is is actually um, produced by, I don't know, five percent of, of companies. So we're not talking about um, tax um, vehicles for small business people. We're talking about massive wealth going into the pockets of the already wealthy. And that's the, the problem we have. And when we come back to salaries, I'm looking at the threat of construction workers to strike, which was reported um, um, recently. And Bobby might say, well, I won't know it's a difference. But, um, there's, um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're reporting, reporting the salaries. A qualified worker earns 780 euros a month. I don't An know engineer, any... 1,100 euros. Well, that, that's the average according to AICCOPN. I'm sure there are companies that pay more, but that's the average. And if you, you're earning 1,100 euros a month and you're paying 800 in, in, in rent, how the hell do you live? Right. No, I agree. And But what I'm saying to you is that, well, especially, um, how do I put this? Uh, yesterday, I actually met some very nice people that asked me to come to give them some advice and they had bought an apartment and they're after having three different companies come to give them a quote to renovate it. None of them wanted to do a contract and wanted to be paid in cash. Of course. And, they, and, this, and, this, and this is what's going on. A lot of people don't want to do it. And, and Now, you go to, to the other side of it and you need to get someone who's really you can depend on. You pay through, through the, you pay it properly because um, and you're going to pay a lot more money than these other guys that don't want to pay taxes. Um, and these guys should be taken out of, the, out of the network completely because the sort of they're doing the honest guys out of work. Mm. Um, but they can't afford, let's say, the other guy now because he's got all these taxes to pay. So it's sort of a, it's a bad circle. But my advice to them was basically go and get a proper quotation, get the um, the decent sized companies, the, the, the credible companies to do the work because they're the only ones really you can depend on. But these guys have to pay salaries or they lose mm -hmm. people. It's trade and the labor trade uh, and, the, and the skilled labor trade. Uh, it's a, there's a huge shortage. So these guys can skip from company to company to company if they're not getting the salaries they want. But yeah. a lot of them, they're, they're getting, um, the salary might say that it's this, but they're getting a bonus of this or they're getting a, or an under the table or whatever it is. And that's because mm -hmm. of the system we have. And sure. it's 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 uh, the more you earn, and I, and I'm talking about the lower paid salaries as well. You you end up paying. It's not it's no incentive to get a uh, how would you say a pay rise because you're coming home with the same money if not less money because you're giving more money away and that money is not coming back to benefit me. Like you said earlier on about the 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 the, the medical situation or sort of the um, the social medical situation that here that it's insufficient. Where is the money going? that all these taxes are are being paid from by um the majority of people that's working in portugal where is the money going they're not getting the service for it and they're mm. not getting the housing they're not getting the medical they're not getting i don't know they're not getting anything really back mm. um except a lot of promises and so on and then next mm. election uh, i hope they cop on and they basically go this country needs to come up with new ideas and it needs to have new people with new ideas that um can actually keep the people here that are that are graduating bring back the graduates create wealth in the country that pays taxes that pays the social services and securities that's required but yes. to do that you need people to actually make money to pay taxes bobby let me let me ask you a question what um and this is a serious question because i don't know the answer to this it is a a, a proposal that has a lot of growing traction in the uk I don't know what effect it would have in Portugal, but to rebalance the tax burden um, against land ownership rather than um, um, salaries, so that the so you you pay a much higher land tax, but you you drop significantly the income tax. What effect would that have? Um, do you think? I don't know here, especially because. <laughs> Historical land ownership and, and property ownership here has been spread out um, among descendants of, of, 
of um, people that have had, had acquired a lot of wealth and actually the banks own an awful lot of property here so, at yeah. the moment um, that has been sort of taken back over the years and, and it's basically sort of gone down a dark hole and no one knows where a lot of property is uh, who owns a lot of stuff and so on and so forth and i know they brought out a tax a long time ago that if you you had to pay a tax on the land or you had to pay a tax on a, a building if it was empty and so mm. on and so forth um which i think increased a lot of people handing back the <laughs> the old buildings back and so on which i think had, and it was a good idea so i think there's ideas there that can move things along in other mm. words create Tax. If you're talking about land where you can build or properties that are, are empty and you tax the owner that it's not being used, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm. It makes them move it and it makes it create, a, but give them an incentive to do it. Yeah. A, 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 a carrot and a stick, if you like. If yeah. you don't do it, yeah. you pay it. If you do do it, we'll allow you that. You know, that kind mm. of way. Yes. And yeah. I think that's really where you need to go. But... Um, I do believe that income tax, and I think the social security is the killer, the social security fees. And you're talking, anyone who's in a, a self-employed, they're paying 220, 230 euros a month in social security alone. Now, if you're talking about that guy who's under 1,000 euros a month, and that, he's already got one third of his salary gone in his social security, but he's got not, not getting any benefit. And um, even like the, the pension in Portugal at the moment when you retire, um, I, I know people that have retired, of the, of parents of people's of colleagues that work with me, and the, the pensions are abysmal. How they can live on them, I have just no idea. Mm. So, like, it, it's not a social country. It's not very social for people no. to be living in. So, for me, they need to sort of look at new ideas with regard with in getting direct inward investment, getting companies to come here to create jobs, these tech jobs. And if you go back to what you were saying earlier on, Carl with regards to AI sort of doing away with a lot of, um, how would you say, uh, a lot of jobs by replacing people with computers and so on and so forth. You're 100% correct in saying that we need to look at the education system and how do we train people for that going forward. You look at Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all these sort of new cities that have come out of the desert over the last, say, 15, 20 years. That's what they're focused on. Their education is on engineering and on computer and on AI and they're booming cities now how you can say like uh, people say ah oh, but that's all oil money and so on it's not dubai doesn't have any oil whatsoever mm. it's built on it on it on a separate <laughs> actually i don't understand the whole genius behind it to be honest with you because for me it should it shouldn't work but it's working you know <laughs> um but it, it could because of the fact that it, it's uh it's creating a lot of uh, business and, and it's i think it's taken a gamble it's taken a gamble that people will come People will set up their companies here. People will create innovation and so on. And this is what they're going to go on. Here, we're, we're still educating people like we did 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. The buildings are still being built the same way as they were 60, 100 years ago. It's, it's bricks and mortar. And there's no insulation, like I said, in, in probably 80% of the construction that's going up. And like we're living in a world that's changing and it's changing at a very rapid pace. And we're, we're ruling it like we were 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. So I just don't well, understand why, why we can't just sort of go, look, it's time to sort of look at a different idea. I, I think we're all in agreement on that. Who, who could possibly disagree with that? And what we realise is that Portugal is a great place to live, isn't it? And it remains to be seen if it can be a great place in which what you're talking about can take place. Because I, I, I noticed that as much as we love the country and its people, the people are very cynical about these things, aren't they? They don't expect these things to change, I don't think. So do you, are you aware, either of you, of any politicians with that kind of vision? Or is that why Portuguese people are so cynical? Doc, you, you, know, you know a little bit about the political landscape. Is anyone talking anything along the lines of what you and Bobby have been talking about this morning in terms of real, true transformational change for the society? Well, there are... There are, there are um politicians on both sides, on the extremes on both sides. I mean, the nature, the nature of politics is that those in the centre don't talk about extreme change and those on the, uh, on the extremes do talk about extreme change. Yeah. And on the one hand, you have people like the Communist Party um, who are um, rightly focusing um, recently on the absence of crash places um, to allow people to go to work. 
Um, and you have Blocker Esqueda, who um, have been taking the uh, government to task over many of the financial scandals. On the other side, you have um, Chega um, and Ventura being uh, accused of fake news. And both both uh, wings of the extremes of politics are, are bringing forward um, uh, a differing um, proposals um, to to change society, um, but they they even they have to start with small um, popular proposals because you don't attract people to your argument in order for them to listen, even listen to um, the, uh, the the broader ideas that you have, unless you can attract them with issues that um, uh, that are relevant to them here and now. And the other thing is. Um, you have to give people the space and the time to be involved in politics. And if people have to work 60 to 80 hours a week, they don't have time to hold their local politicians to account. They don't have time to get involved in civic life. And that's one of the things that the current system relies on, people to be too bloody knackered to, uh, and too, too um, dis, dis, um, disenchanted to get involved in, in helping to shape their own future. Interesting observation, Bobby. Finally, because we we're just going over to ten o'clock, but I've got to give you some dad jokes, guys. So um, tell tell me, Bobby, what do you? <laughs> no, really. Um, to, what do you make of that? I mean, do you see any vision? Yeah. Shager might say it's the foreigners' fault, but it might be the foreigners. It might be us lot who's who've got these ideas, who can be something of an antidote in in this very cynical atmosphere in which we find ourselves. Yeah, um, I actually. I, how how am I going to put this? I think there's not enough people working um, in the, the social the social system at the moment. If you like, is that you have a lot of people that are depending on the social security. If you like, and um, I find it very difficult to get employee employees in in certain positions and so on and so forth. And it's a lot of people just um, have a temperamental that they, you know rather not do it. You know, like anyway. So. I think that there you have a part of that, but to fix this issue, I don't see anyone at the moment that is is sort of going to incentivize and decentivize what's required for it to move forward. I really don't. I don't. I don't know who. If you're to vote for someone, who would you vote for? I don't know. I really yeah. don't. I think someone needs to come out with a sort of a new platform. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, we look forward to that, and we can discuss these ideas at the upcoming first Discovery Portugal Discovery Weekend in the company of Bobby in Arrowera. This is we're kicking off with this. Just very yeah. quickly, the link is on the screen. We're going to be coming to your man.